Good, how are you? Good. Um, so we'll take a few questions for DeMarcus. Please raise your hand. Uh, TR. DeMarcus, what does this mean to you to finally reach the major leagues at this point? Um, it, feels, it feels great. Like, it's like something you think about when you little. I never would have thought I would ever be able to like play on a big league field. And to get caught up, just, it just, I know I just did. I already was caught up to do it for my family. They're very happy, so it just feels crazy. It's kind of still like feel like a dream. So you're over there at the alternate camp all summer long. Were you sitting there? I know you, you saw guys come and go, and nobody called your name. Were you starting to wonder if they were going to call you? Were you getting anxious, or how were you viewing that? Yeah, I was kind of anxious a little bit. I was like, well, I was just think I wasn't trying to think about it too much. I was just trying to get my work in and what they wanted me to do and do everything they wanted me to do and when I'm be prepared, so when I do get that call, come up here and I can maybe stay up here for a long time. Okay, thank you, Demarcus. Jeff. Hey, um, when Chris has talked about you were working on your curveball, uh, but also he said there are some mental things you were working on. Can you kind of talk about those? What what you've had to uh, do between the years to to get ready for this? Oh, it was just like I was very like a. I guess I I I get into like I care a lot about into the game. I care a lot of stuff about it, so I kind of pitch with like an emotion a little bit. Like I try to I get everything out of it because I care so much about it. So I so they wanted me to get to a point to like grow a little bit more, or mature a little bit more. So when I control my emotion, so now whether it's a bad pitch, if I get up a hit or a run or anything, it doesn't phase me for the next pitch. And like when stuff started clicking and all that, some of the times when I, I kind of struggle a little bit, it kind of go into like if I throw a bad pitch, it go from pitch to pitch or batter to batter. But now it's to the point to where I let a lot of stuff phase me anymore. I'm just trying to get out so nothing and anything get to me. What, was, was there a little trick you had to convince yourself to do it? or No, it was, it was just kind of like don't, don't, get, don't get caught up so much in it, like just have, just go out there and have fun. But I, I be too passionate about it. I'll be trying to make, I'll be trying to do great every time I go out. That I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I was kind of, you know, Woody was just telling me, it was like, just go, I mean, just go, you having fun, just go have fun, just have fun on the mountain. It's just a still a game. Don't put so much pressure on yourself and don't get so mad at yourself. And I just, I guess it was just trying to hold myself to a higher standard. And I was just kind of like get mad at myself. But now to the point, I'm like, Man, it's just a game, just have fun. A lot of people, I mean, to the point to where I mean, it was close and I was just like, I'm right there, so I just got to do something so I can get there. Cool. Thanks, man. Other questions? Uh, Chris. Hey, DeMarcus. Uh, I remember when we when I talked to you at spring training, you know, just going over where your pitches were then. How do you feel like your, your pitches were then as compared to where they are now and how they could play at the big league level? Um, I was very focused. I was down there at the auction side. I was just focused on the stuff, the things I do best. Um, so I try to get that to the best, get to the best way possible I can to where it, my my strategies and how I throw, I got I capitalized that to a point to where I mean, I'll just if I if my strength was throwing fastballs up, I sat there and freaking. Every out and I'm throwing fastballs up as much as I can. If I want to curveball down, I'm throwing curveballs down. So I'm just sitting there trying to get to the to the best what to the best point I can to where I can just sit there and just pound over fastballs as much as I can. But it's got a lot better. I'm a lot better control with it. I can command it a lot better than I did. A couple, I mean, spring training. All right, thanks, Demarcus. Uh, Eric, you got something? I do. Uh, DeMarcus, I wondered, at what point did you get to be big? Were you always the largest kid, or did you have a growth spurt at some point, like in high school or somewhere along the line? Oh, yeah, um, actually, it was kind of crazy. Like, I, like in night, going to ninth grade, I was only, like, five, five. And, and, and when I got to ninth grade, I just started – I don't know, I, I moved schools. I went from West Marion to go to the pedal. When I moved, I just I went back to my old school because I was going to watch the football games. 
And everybody was like, dang, you don't got tall. And I was like, bro, I don't, I, I didn't notice it. And then I just kept getting taller and taller as the years went by. And I was, I mean, in high school, my last year, I was 6'4", 245, 250. And then I guess I started getting to my grown man body a little bit, starting to come up, come along and just kept going. <laughs> And what is the what's the correct height and weight now? This uh, I'm six five to six five. And um, what size jersey do you wear, and what size shoe do you wear? I wear well in cleats. Sometimes I wear a fourteen, but most of my my shoes are at thirteen, and my jersey is a fifty. A fifty. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Uh, Rick. Yeah, hey, DeMarcus, good to see you again, man. I enjoyed talking to you back uh, when you were in Frisco back in the day. Um, I know your story is so amazing, you know, coming from Mississippi, a huge family. Your great-grandmother had 19 kids. Tell me about what it was like growing up in that dynamic of having such a big family. I mean, it's just like family unions is always the best because you get to see all your cousins that come from everywhere because a lot of them moved, moved away. And when you get this, when you get the family unions in like Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's just like, cause my my great grandma was like a centerpiece to our family. Like everything revolved around my great grandma. Like if we did anything, cooked or anything, she was like right in the middle of it. And like she passed away, and it just like, it just it was just like everybody. We all was like it's just like she was like the the root of the like the tree, and she just was like everybody else is like we we like filled off her. And like you just, it was, it was nice. We had so many cousins and so many great. I mean, and so many, like younger, younger cousins. It's like it's crazy. It's like I, I, I didn't realize it when I was little because I stopped. I mean, after I started playing baseball in the summers, I stopped. I mean, I didn't be able. To, I wasn't able to go to a lot of family unions like that. But I, I mean, when you think about it, it's just like it's crazy. Like I, I mean, I, I miss that because it's like you ride forwards, go mud ride, go swim, play basketball. It's like the whole family just a big, great time. It was, it's, it's phenomenal. How did that shape you? I mean, did you have to speak up a little bit to be known? No, I mean, kind of like all my, my bigger cousins, like when I want to go play basketball, I'm the little guy out there trying to play basketball with the big guys. They're like, man, go, go on somewhere, sit over there and watch because you ain't going to be able to play with us and all that stuff. But it was like, I've been around my cousins and they just like, I want to play so bad, but you were so little to them. So it was like, you couldn't do nothing. But it was fun when they, when they got out the court and go out there and play and it was fun. Last question. Um, you know, you've been around a lot of guys and seen a lot of the young guys get called up. Uh, how inspiring has that been to you to now be able to realize that dream uh, possibly today? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I've still been like, <laughs> I'm still in shock a little bit, kind of like I like I, I haven't been able to sleep a little bit, like I haven't been able to eat, eat a little bit. I've been kind of nervous because every time that phone ring last night, I was just like my heart was like just beating, and like just seeing like Leodi and all them guys. Like I've been playing with Leodi since I got drafted, and Tejada and when Sam came in sixty, and it's like I was very happy for them guys. Like Leodi is a great player, a great guy, great teammate, all them great team, great guys. So I was like, it's kind of nice to see them up here performing and doing well and it's it a great thing and me sitting over there at the auction site and watching like maybe I can just get the, when I get a chance I can go up there and do the same thing they're doing so when I finally got to college, I was kind of happy and it's just it's nice to see nice to be up here and nice to be around the older guys and learning from them and stuff. Thank you buddy appreciate it. Anything else for DeMarcus? Let's go to Evan and then Levi and then Matt Hicks and that'll be it. Go ahead Evan. Hey, DeMarcus, congratulations on the call-up, man. Um, I just was looking at your Insta stories today, and you posted a lot of congratulations from a lot of people. I'm just wondering if there's one text or one message you got from somebody that really kind of hit home for you. I mean, um, like, I mean, like I said, I was talking to Sam Blum about it. Like, it took me so hard to, like, not not call my cousins or anything and like because them guys been like um two of my mentors like they I used to be around them all the time and it's like my mom and them calling me I just one thing like I'm, if my mom's happy I'm happy like she's been all been there for me she's been working hard we had five siblings she always been working hard she when I called and told her it was just like I don't know it's like 
when she told when she started getting happy, it's just like, I don't know. Bro, when my mom's happy, just something makes me just go harder or anything. And when my when she take me and she called me back and tell me so happy and stuff and making t shirts and all that stuff, it's just that's probably the one the one thing that hit me and I was that was like I was kinda happy about. Did you see what the t shirts look like? No, I didn't. They they posted had like a little watch party yesterday, but um she said she sent me pictures today. But it was like Okay. But they all made up T-shirts. And they made like T-shirts on over on and stuff. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Um, and I, I was just curious. Growing up, um, who was your favorite player? My favorite player growing up was Sammy Sosa, because <laughs> my dad was from Chicago and he really liked. He's a big Chicago fan. He always used to have talking about him and stuff. So I freaking love Twenty One. That was my favorite number, and. That's the number I grew up with playing with it all my years until now. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Congratulations again. Levon. Hey, I apologize for the background, by the way. I'm on my phone and don't know how to turn it off. Um, DeMarcus, I was, I was curious. You know, a lot of times when guys get called up, they're sort of the only, uh, the, the only rookie in the room or maybe one of two. Your call up, you've got. I think you might be the ninth guy to make your big league debut for the Rangers this year. Is that, does that make it easier because you've got all these guys that have done it so recently and that you've played with, or does it make it more of a challenge being on a team of like, man, we got a lot of guys here that have not a whole lot of big league experience and, you know, maybe feeling overmatched when you're playing these other teams that are full of more established big leaguers. Does it, is it one or the other for you? I mean, being up here, I mean, most of the guys up here, they try to make you feel like you belong a little bit, like talking to Lance and all of them, like they they make you feel like you like you can go over here and do it just like how we've been up here and doing it for so long. So mm -hmm. they kind of get like they get you a little confidence boosted a little bit, like talking to Goody yesterday. He's like, dude, you can like, the same game, bro. Just go like what you've been doing this last couple of years, but you can come up here and do it. You just gotta don't worry about just go up here and just throw and have fun, like. Don't be don't be trying to get caught up in all like this is Carlos Carrera or this is Jose Altuve. Even though them guys are real good, he's like, bro, just go up there and challenge them, bro. Just see, if, just go up there and challenge. Them. You're gonna be surprised how good your stuff works. So just saying, just them telling me and like keeping me, like like I because I, I was nervous all day yesterday. I was like, bro, I can't even feel my I can't even feel my body. Like I was at stretch and I was like, kind of jittery. I was like, bro, this, this is crazy. Like I usually take pre workout or anything before I pitch or anything. Like. It's like I'm already on that, and I ain't even got, and it ain't even no fans here, and I still got it. Yeah. But they they do a great job with like trying to make everybody feel like they're one of them. So it's kind of been nice to be up around them guys. Yeah. Do you think it will make it easier for you making your big league debut and there's not fans in the stands? Do you think that'll take a little bit of the pressure off? Uh, it kind of will take a little pressure off, but uh, I don't know, because I because sometimes when I get on the mound, it's like. I can't hear anything. I can't see anything. So I ain't gonna. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you because I. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, playing in Dominican, I pitched against. I'm mean, pitching in like this is like twenty thousand people, and it's kind of yeah. wild. Like, but I think it'll be a little bit of pressure off pitching with no fans. Right on. Thanks, to Marcus. Good luck. Congratulations. Hey, Matt. Last one. All right. Matt. Thanks, John. Congrat Congratulations, DeMarcus. Um, we've heard so much about the um, elite spin rate on your fastball. And I was wondering, is that something that you had when you hit the scene in 2015? Or is it something that maybe somewhere along the line in your development with the Rangers, you learned something and you were able to make a significant increase in that um, ability to spin the ball? Uh, I mean, in 2000, like, I guess everything started going, like, going up when I was in extended in 2016 with me, Tyler Phillips, and uh, CD. We was all sitting there, and, like, me and Tyler, we was always pitch on the same day. And we never knew, like, what it was, like, what it was. Like, Tyler go out there, he was one of the best control in my life. Like, he can throw the ball anywhere he wants. So he was like, dude, I'm up here throwing 95, and I'm throwing it, like, Throwing the hidden spots and they hitting my stuff. I was like, bro, I don't know. He's like, you go up there, you throwing 94, and you people just swinging and missing. 
And I was like, bro, I just know I just got a, he a heavy fastball. That's all I knew from him. I never knew about anything about analytics or anything about it. Like, I mean, and then so when I first met uh, Todd and all them, they started talking to him. I got, I got to know, like, all the spin rays and all that. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. Because when Matt Bush was there, he had, like, one of, one of the best fastballs. And I was like, dang, my, my fastball is kind of like his. So now I can just – and I saw he was freaking dealing up there, and I was like, that's crazy. And that's how it came about. And I was like, well, I'm just it, just – it just basically just gave me confidence when I was up there and pitch. Like, oh, I just – I think I can, can trust my fastball a lot more. And I just, that's, what, that's been my bread and butter a little bit.